In this work, the results of a collaborative research program between the Polytechnic of Torino and the University of Parma is presented. This study is focused on the mechanical characterization of different biochar-based cement composites. The sustainability of materials and construction processes is measured by calculating the carbon footprint that represents the amount of carbon dioxide that is emitted during the entire life cycle. The building industry is one of the most polluting sectors. In particular, concrete is the building material most widely used in the world. The production of about 3 cubic meters of concrete causes one ton of carbon dioxide emission and if we consider that each year more than 10 billion tons of concrete are produced, it is immediately clear that concrete industry has a high impact on the environment. Therefore, it is increasingly necessary to explore new cementitious materials that have a near-zero carbon footprint. The research focuses on the use of biochar, which is a solid byproduct resulting from biomass pyrolysis or gasification, as additive in cementitious materials. This use of biochar is promising thanks to its ability of sequestering high volume of stable carbon in its structure. In this way, carbon could be locked indirectly for decays in civil structures. More in details, the aim of the work is the experimental investigation of the optimal percentage addition of biochar nanomicroparticles in different cementitious materials. The experimental program consisted of two series of tests. The first on cement pastes carried out at Polytechnic of Torino and the second one on cementitious mortars carried out at University of Parma as a first step to develop environmentally friendly green concretes. Both cement pastes and mortars were prepared by using the same biochar added in increasing percentage up to 2.5% by weight of cement. Prismatic single-notch specimens were subjected to three-point bending tests according to the Japanese Concrete Institute standard so as to determine flexible strength and fractal energy. Moving on to the description of the experimental program, it is necessary to define what is biochar. Recently, the International Biochar Initiative has defined biochar as a solid material obtained from the thermochemical conversion of biomass in an oxygen-limited environment. The morphology, the content of stable carbon, the release of volatiles, the size and distribution of pore in biochar particles vary depending on key factors mainly represented by the type of biomass and the characteristic of the process of production, such as the maximum temperature, the heating rate, and the pressure. Thanks to this characteristic, a lot of research has already been done on the advantages related to the use of biochar as soil amendment, or more generally, in the agricultural-related field. Nevertheless, biochar, due to its valuable properties, can cover a wide range of uses in different applications as a multifunctional material. This application in the building sector is still little explored, but there is an emerging trend in this regard, especially as additive or replacement in cementitious composites. is obtained as a byproduct of pyrolysis or gasification processes, starting from a lot of different biomasses, mainly represented by agricultural wood or municipal solid waste. The biochar used in this work was produced from virgin wood chips in a drowned draft gasifier. The fine particles of biochar, which cannot be applied as a solid improver because of their size, can be used in building materials. Even if several are the benefits of using biochar in cementitious materials, there is not yet an ideal mixed design for its use. The results coming from literature are often dissimilar since biochar comes from different raw materials and from production plants with different characteristics. So, in this experimental campaign, several biochar-based cement composites were analyzed, providing a mechanical characterization in order to verify their possible structural use. 
First of all, it was necessary to chemically and physically characterize the adducted viature. Particle size distribution was analyzed, resulting in a range of sun nanometers. Then, biochar was analyzed by means of X-ray diffraction to have a force identification of the presence of amorphous and crystalline phases. In general, the thermal stability of biochar depends on the temperature of its production process. The increase in temperature originates indeed more stable carbon forms with the high heat resistance of the material. To verify if the residual weight is due to more stable carbon form during the gasification process, a thermogravimetric analysis was carried out under airflow. The presence of an unburned fraction could be attributed to the presence of inorganic compounds or metals. As regards pH, tested biochar samples was alkaline, probably due to the presence of organic functional groups, carbonated or organic alkalis. The water retention capacity of biochar expressed as the mass of the absorbed water per gram of dry biochar was evaluated by performing a proper water absorption test, which confirmed the capability of biochar to retain water thanks to the presence of a high number of closely split pores able to rapidly absorb moisture. Biochar was added in the mixed design of seven pastes and mortars by adopting increasing percentages up to 2.5% by weight of cement. As regards seven pastes, biochar was mixed in a solution of deionized water and superplasticizer. Then the ordinary Portland cement was added. As regards mortars, two different admixtures were prepared. The admixtures denoted as M simulated in scale are ready mixed concrete, while type N referred to a mix for precast concrete. They differed mainly for the adopted type of cement and for the water to cement ratio. As biochar tends to absorb water, the superplasticizer percentage was increased with increasing biochar addiction in order to get about the same flowability as the control batch. It is worth noticing that in case of mortars, biochar was at the dry to administer together with cement. All the experimental composites were cast in prismatic molds by using the geometry and the dimension recommended in the Japanese Concrete Institute standard. Once the curing in water was finished, a U-shaped cut, C mm deep for cement pastes and double for mortars, was made in the middle of the specimens. The prismatic notched specimen was subjected to three point bending tests under crack mouth opening displacement control in order to evaluate both flexural strength and fracture energy. Fracture energy was evaluated by using the equation proposed in the Japanese standard by integrating the area below the load CMOD curve and taking into account the work done by the dead weight of specimen and the loading equipment. Turning now to the results, for each cement paste batch, flexural strength and fracture energy both at 7 and 28 days were determined. Each batch was composed of four specimens and the values here reported represent the mean one. It can be recognized that the batch with the lowest percentage of biochar shows a degree of flexural strength compared to the plain cementitious paste, both at 7 and 28 days. On the contrary, for biochar addition of 1 and 1.5%, it can be noted that the values differ between 7 and 28 days. In the case of 7 days curing, there is a decrease in flexural strength, while at 28 days a significant increase compared to the reference samples is observed. The highest percentages of biochar addition leads to an increase of flexural strength at 7 days, while the results at 28 days are profoundly different between the two batches. The specimen with 2% addition show about the same flexural strength as the reference, while for 2.5%, a significant decrease can be observed, probably due to an unoptimal dispersion of biochar in the cementitious matrix. The results of fracture energy at 7 and 28 days do not follow the same trend of the bending strength. 
Results at 7 days show an increasing trend, while the results at 28 days are difficult to interpret because of fluctuations in values that could be explained by the ability of biochar to interact with the hydration of the samples during the curing phase. The same mechanical properties were determined also for mortars. In this case, each batch was composed of three specimens. As regards mortar type men, it can be seen that the highest addition of biochar provides promising results, not only in terms of strength, but also in terms of toughness, especially at 14 days scoring. Biochar tends indeed to produce beneficial effects on early age development of mechanical properties, since it acts as accelerator that leads to early generation of more hydration products. The obtained results could suggest to consider for future research different percentages and in particular higher of biochar. However, it is worth noticing that 2.5% is chosen as maximum percentage in this work, since higher biochar additions involve a considerable increase of water or superplasticizer in order to obtain good flowability. As regards mortar type N, a different trend can be observed with respect to mortar type M, probably due to how biochar interacts with the type of cement and the water to cement ratio. In this case, the addition of 1% leads to an increase of flexural strength, while for 2.5%, only the results at 50 days are improved. The highest percentage of addition seems the most promising in terms of fracture energy even if the role of biochar on toughness for mortar type pen is a little bit difficult to interpret, since, as can be seen, the results at 14 and 50 days scoring do not follow the same trend. This could be explained by considering that the values of fracture energy of control batch at 14 days present a high scatter, resulting in a mean value at 14 days quite greater than the corresponding one at 50 days. Moving to conclusions based on the experimental results, it can be observed that the addition of biochar can increase the flexural strength and fracture energy of cementitious composites. In this study, the percentage that generally leads to the best results is 2% for cement pastes and 2.5% for mortars. These values do not correspond to the percentages found in previous studies, but this could be related to the different production process of biochar and to the biomass source. Anyway, the results obtained show the addition of biochar in the test percentages provides a material with an ounce of comparable flexural strength and toughness with respect to place specimens. So, the test can be considered quite positive and satisfactory and the objective of the research reached. Thank you very much for your kind attention.